furious fighting. Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy. Welcome back to Furious Fighting, the series where we take a look at fighting games and have a smashing time. Speaking of which, Smash Bros. It's a crossover fighting game like no other. It includes characters from a plethora of Nintendo series as well as a multitude of other game series, from the likes of Street Fighter and Sonic the Hedgehog, all the way to Final Fantasy and Mega Man. Something like the Smash series is a thing that happens once in, well, ever. The massive roster, the care that is put into each and every challenger, the massive amount of fan service and modes, and especially all the LEGO shenanigans that go behind the curtains. With the end of the biggest game in the series, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, everyone is now trying to capitalize and become the newest icon of the platform fighting genre. Companies like Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers, and even the developers of popular fighting game Smash Flash 2 are making an indie crossover game. But this is not the only time where different characters came to create their own crossover, as back in 2005, Shonen Jump decided to create their own version of the classic Smash formula. History For those who don't know, Jump is a line of manga anthologies created by Shueisha. Yes, I just read that from Wikipedia. Weekly Shonen Jump is a magazine that publishes different chapters of various manga. They can flex their huge selections of series. Household names like Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, My Hero Academia, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Hunter x Hunter, Leech, and so much more. So it would only make sense to use their different IPs under the Jump umbrella to create a handled fighting game that could please all the fans around the world, I mean Japan. Only in Japan. And thus, Jump Superstars was released. But then, only a few years later, they would go on to make a much better sequel. So we're going to talk about that. This is Jump Ultimate Stars for the Nintendo DS. The story, because yes, there is a story, revolves around an evil villain that conquered all the worlds in the J-Universe. And now it's up to five years that we're able to save themselves from this villain to bring peace back to all the worlds, because everyone is now evil. Who are these five? Well, Goku, Naruto, Luffy, Gintoki, and Toru Muiho from Muiho Toroji? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. So it's up to you to save the world. Gameplay. Uh, before we start, I'd like to tell y'all that I'm using a fan-made translation. It's incomplete after all these years, but it does the job. And also, also, shoutouts to my man Sonico and Shawkat734. They helped with importing the save file of my copy into the emulator for my footage. Also, 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 my emulator just kind of fucked up the graphics sometimes. So you're gonna see a little bit of weird stuff, and I'm, I have no clue why. Jump Ultimate Stars is very similar to Smash, if you couldn't tell. You have two buttons for normal moves and a button for special moves. You can perform moves depending on the direction you press, both in the ground and in the air. The moves done with the X button can be seen as the special finale moves. They do way more damage than the usual move, and they use a little bit of a meter right below your health bar. That refills by defeating enemies. Your goal is to attack your enemy as much as possible, so you can drain all the colors from them, so they can be the feeder. Uh, either that, or you can launch them off the stage, when they'll also have the chance to recover. See? I told you this was like Smash. But, you see, under the quirky items, stages, and characters lies the main gimmick of this game, the manga page. This is the most unique thing of this game. You can customize your deck with three different types of coma, which are basically these manga panels. A character coma that is pretty straightforward, an assist coma that summons a character that will help you by attacking the enemy, healing you, giving you a certain boost, or just to cause mayhem, and then there's a support coma, characters that cannot be summoned and are just part of the deck, and boost a character in some way. The strategy comes into putting panels that match perfectly, as you'll have a limited space. Not only that, but you have to include at least one coma of all types. You can then assign a leader seal to a character that will make them appear first in battle. Not only that, but you can assign other commas to the shoulder buttons. So how's the gameplay? It's very good. It can be a little bit chaotic at times, especially when there's four characters on screen, all with their own assists. But thankfully, Lambert lags. The controls are pretty bare bones, yet I think that's a better thing for a handheld game. With that being said, at times it does feel like you're relying only on some moves. Pressing random buttons, hoping for the best to happen. 
characters. Now we get to the juicy part, the cast of characters. And for something as simple as this game, it really encapsulates every character's personality, and especially puts a lot of fan service into each character. Many characters, if not all of them, have multiple forms that you can unlock. For example, Goku has also a Super Saiyan form, or Jotaro as a form where he gets the help of his friends for his finishers, as well as a form where he can stop time. I love how more powerful characters occupy more space in the deck, making for interesting strategies while building one. Since we don't really have sound effects, the characters rely on the show-don't-tell method and their small animation help communicating their traits, like taunts or counterattacks. The game's strong point is the huge cast of characters. Some pop very popular series like Dragon Ball get multiple characters, but even smaller titles like Slam Dunk, Cobra, and Black Cat get a lot of representation. Every character is filled to the brim with references, like Juru can do many of his poses, or Kenshiro from Okuto no Ken can do the classic 100 hit barrage. Modes The way you unlock all these characters is rather particular. Instead of having them all unlocked by the start, you'll have to unlock them through a story mode. It's nothing fancy as we've seen before, some of the heroes out of the Jump universe save themselves from the attack of an evil entity, and so it's up to you to save all of the other worlds and discover who's behind this mess. Each fight is unique to each other. Not only do the opponents change between worlds, but you also get some missions too. For example, you may need to defeat your enemies within a time limit, defend a character from getting hit, destroy all the walls, grab all the Dragon Balls before anyone gets them, or even protect the Redstone of Asia. Completing these missions will reward you with some points or some coma and doing other specific smaller missions, like completing the match within a time limit, will give you more points. What is the purpose of these points, you may ask? Simple. You get these color thingies to evolve your panels or unlock new ones. Inside one of the menus for each character lies a skill tree of sorts. You can use some of your points to unlock assists, new playable stronger version of these characters, more paths, like for example leveling up King Kai will lead you to unlock a new path for Goku more stages, information on some of the represented manga, music, brand new worlds to explore and even helpers inside the menus that will help you navigate them. As you can probably tell, this is where you will spend most of your time doing your playthrough, and it's also the biggest form of replayability in this game. Some of the missions will take a while, trust me. A few may be challenging, hard, but some will be straight up unfair. It's a pain in the ass, but not many missions are like this, thankfully. I also like how the worlds are organized. You would have a group of 3 or 4 worlds that are united by a common theme, like comedy, sport, spirits, and more. So spoilers ahead for the finale, I'm just gonna put a timestamp of sorts here to skip this uh, huge spoiler, but the one behind is... Uh, what? It's the doctor from Dr. Slum, the, the evil one. Wh why? Why him? Well, you do a cool quiz before the fight, but it's kind of underwhelming. The other modes are a simple versus mode, a quiz, a wireless multiplayer where you can fight against people who don't have the cartridge, a place where you can see all the things you have unlocked, and that's kind of it. Great modes, lots of replayability. Presentation. This game looks pretty good for the standards. I love the art style and it looks like I'm not the only one. Since many games are made these days with this same sprite art style. Something that I'm not really a fan of is the lack of any types of alternative costumes. Like, at all, but oh well. The game goes full manga mode with the introductions, panels, and the fact that the stages are basically just manga panels, and the walls are pages. That's pretty neat. The music is mostly great, although there are some bangers, like this one. Final verdict! Jump Ultimate Stars for the Nintendo DS is a fun experience, and will surely be a treat for those looking for some fan service from their favorite manga series. The game is full of charm and modes that will keep you occupied for a while, but even though that may be the case, the gameplay isn't the best, as at times it feels like mashing buttons is the way to victory. 
The game is full of characters and unlockables, which is amazing. And unlike other jump crossovers, <coughs> jump force, <coughs> the game makes sure to cover even the most underrated of series. The use of the touchscreen is awesome, and the assist and support mechanics are great. I want to see a remake of this game so badly, or even a proper sequel, with voice acting, more stages, modes, and maybe even a little bit more quality. Until then, Jump Ultimate Stars gets a hyper. That's right, I love this game. It's not perfect, but the simple nature of it all was kind of justified by the fact that this is played on a handheld. I didn't get the chance to play with friends since I have no friends that would want to play this with me, but I guess it's great. The game is not perfect by any means, but it does succeed in what it wants to do without trying to be much more than that. Now, did you play the game? Did you enjoy it? Tell me down below and don't forget to do the usual YouTube stuff. No, giving me a thumbs up would help me a lot and commenting and subscribing would make me feel very happy. Thank you so much for staying until the end. With that being said, Savvy out.